that God has a plan and He has an order. And for us not to get caught up in what the enemy is doing and what the enemy is saying and those manifestations that we see that are temporal. For God is eternal and His plan is everlasting. He is the King of kings and He is the Lord of the Lord. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the beginning and the end. He's the author and the finisher of your faith. And if you believe and you trust the Lord and lean not to understand that God will direct your path. And no matter what's going on at the present time, it will not compare to what God is getting ready to do for you and for this world. I want to tell you, we don't go out of here poor and broke and defeated. We go out of here triumphant. And again, I get something in his law. Take the sword of the man. They lack nothing, but our mighty God was with them. So shall it be in this end time. They shall know that I am God, and that I am able to deliver my people. For I am the mighty God, and I am able to deliver my Trust me, trust me. And you shall see the manifestation of those things that I have spoken to you through my word and through my prophets. You shall see them come to pass as I establish this earth. Amen. Your body. 
valuable to God and value the kingdom of God. It's so easy to get our eyes on circumstances this week. It's been a heck of a week. I mean, I mean so far as trying, we've been trying to get there. It's been a great week at the same time. We've had more people out here than you have been out here. They've been doing all kinds of things and going places. They came this last Saturday and we sat for 350 families and, and they just been working and we've been doing things. But at the same time, the first thing that happened was I went to get the tag for our, get our truck changed for us because we, we paid our truck off. And let me, we paid our truck off. I went to get a tag and now I found out I got the tag office that the government makes the church now pay excise tax on vehicles. We've never done this in the history of our church as to pay the exercise tax. Well, the good news was, is if you remember what I told you, they had to pay the blue big value of the church, of the, of the truck. So remember, we gave $10,000 for the truck. The blue big value of the truck was $41,535. Praise God, we got, we got a good truck. Amen. Worth a whole lot more than what we paid for. But then I had to pay $1,500 with an excise tax on it. Then remember I told you when I stunned you before I said the refrigerator, refrigerator had gone out. What happened was the plug had busted and all the Freon went out of it. And so they had to come out and repair it. And they had to buy it because it's an older unit. They don't store, they don't keep that Freon anymore. So he had to buy me a whole bottle of Freon. I said, you're going to buy a whole bottle of Freon and we're going to put it up on your freezer. And anytime I come here, I'll have it. But he said, you're going to have to charge this whole system back up. Well, the Freon was 750 The part was like 150 The time we got through it was $1,180. So one day I spent $1,500. The next day I spent 1180 Amen. And then on Thursday, we're going to do a whip pick of the side is coming back, and he has a blowout on the back tire. <laughs> we look at our tires, and they're wore out. And then we wore them out. Amen. And so I checked my tires, and I've been checking around the best price I can get to the church. It's $410 a tire, and we got to buy five tires. We bought one about, about six months ago on the left front. But we need to buy five tires. We need to go ahead and replace them and get them because we drive it every day picking up food. And so this has been quite a week. So we're looking at $2,100 for the tire. So this morning, I'm going to give you a great opportunity to plant a seed here in a minute. But first, I'm going to show you because that would be important to understand why and the things that are going on. While we're making an impact in America, we're also networking and we're making inroads into the nation. One of the nations we've been feeding in, and I was talking to Ron Bryant, which Ron was our missionary to Nicaragua that went in and ended up opening up over 400 Bible schools in the country of Nicaragua, teaching the Word of God. My man, God, he's back home now. In fact, he just had his 80th birthday. Oh, oh amen. 80th God. birthday. Oh, he's back in St. Louis, but he raised up nationals, and now they're running the ministry. And, uh, but as I was talking to him about sending some more food in there, he said, yeah, he said, it's really going to be tough. And I said, how okay. come? He said, right now, the government is like a dictator. And basically, if you don't know, they're basically a god in goods from China. And they're trying to go right now at Panama, basically, at Panama Canal through Nicaragua to try to get closer, basically take away from the United States of America. And so they're building this canal right now. Amen. They're building it. But he said, right now, you can't even say one word of opposition to the nation or they throw you in prison. And said, right now, they're confiscating their vehicles. He said, you can't even really own a vehicle now. The government is taking everything. And he said this to me, ask your church to pray. Amen. Pray. It was one of the first countries that were birthed was Nicaragua. And it's been a beautiful journey as we've reached thousands and thousands of people for the Christ. But I'm praying for a revival in that nation. An overturning. Amen. An overturning. Amen. And that which is bad and church to the good. But we're getting ready at the same time. I can't look backwards. I've got to move forward. Amen. Anytime time you know, the best thing is sometimes you have a really good offense. Amen. Amen. So we scored a touchdown. We're opening up. We just sent out a load in Costa Rica. That's one new nation. Our second nation we're getting ready to send to after we send two loads to Liberia. 
amen, as we're going to send a load to Malawi, Africa. And I've got some pictures from Malawi to so show them here. This is our school here. There's 350 kids in this orphanage and school that are going to school and stay there. Uh, they provide for them, and this is the first time they just got their NGO. This is Victory Christian Compound. Amen. Been there. Uh, uh, Charles Pompey opened it up. That we'll be seeing a picture of him here in a minute. You might know him. He was a powerful man of God, the first king of Hagen, and then went to work with Victory and helped establish Victory Christian Center with buildings of Goddard. And uh, basically went over there to start this poor victory. And then ended up, God put on his heart, and he stayed there for a while. And ended up raising up this girl. This is some of the kids. And uh, this is John and Bright Carlene, the rest, the rest family that are here. I mean, you all might know them here. They live here. And uh, they provide every year. We've been helping them send clothing and stuff to, to Malawi, Africa, to the orphanage. Uh, they send one container a year. And uh, this is Charles Pomley. Com Comley, I said that right. I know I said that. Comley, but a powerful man of God. Some of you might recognize him, but he's gone on to be with the Lord this last year. Amen. So, oh, this one there. This is one of our, this is our forklift system. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hey, this is our forklift system. This is how we get it to the warehouse. Hey, you see him, that's Brother John right there. He's very vocal, very energetic. He's retired, but he just loves the Lord. But he's a ball of energy. And he just won't quit. He just keeps on. But he's like a cheerleader everywhere he goes. It reminds me of Ron Bryant. Uh, they grow their own crops there, corn and different things that go along with it. Uh, they will be using the food there in the school, but the main outreach is going to be there's 700,000 people that live around this orphanage that basically are in poverty. They come and pick up food there, whatever they can get from them to help them. And so they're going to use this food as a tool of outreach to evangelize and touch the community with the love of God. Amen. Now, carrying different ministries there. This is the big, this is the big overhead door they have to get in to where they store the, the product that is the not even forklift. Amen. As they're carrying it in. Uh, right here is the watering system. Amen. And this is a water well that we planted there that they pump at pumps of water. Some of them will walk five miles and come and get water carrying uh, that bucket so their kids and different things to be able to get it. And then they pump it into it and carry the water back. And so we're very thankful uh, to take this journey with them to birth this nation. I'll let you know as soon as we get the victory, but uh, the paperwork has been submitted. And I, I think right now everything is going perfectly for us to be able to do it. So just be standing and agree with me that the food comes in. Uh, as you know, we're going to be sending food to Pakistan. We're going to be getting ready. Uh, we're getting ready right now. I'm getting everything together to be able to start stacking the food. I'll be having days that I'll be opening up. The teams will come from all over Tulsa, and we'll begin to stack those foods and send them and put them in the box. We already have the boxes to stack and everything. Uh, just waiting on some degrees right now. It's really hard to get some things. And so, uh, waiting some changes in our ingredients that goes into that, but still maintain the same protein. So, be standing and agree with me that everything comes in. We have our first, uh, first, really, top half of lima beans, not lima beans, but little beans came in. Amen. So, we're going to be using little beans in, in with the rice and the vitamins and the vegetables. So, uh, just be believing more is coming in. I ordered it, so this is going to come in. But he can plant a seed to help us to be able to birth these new works all over the world. He said, Go ye into all the world and preach this gospel. We must do it through demonstration. Amen. Not just your words, but through demonstration. And it means we got to be a plowman. Like Nehemiah, we might have to put a sword in one hand and a work plow in the other. Amen. That means we got to go to work for Jesus. Amen. We're going to talk to you a bit today about going to work for Jesus. Amen. And I want to give you an opportunity. If this is what you're seeing. This is the reason why that God set up the tithe. It wasn't even was trying to get your money. He was trying to get your money so you could fund it to those in need. He said, bring all your tithe and offer to my house and prove me and see if I will open the lid to heaven and rebuke the devourer for your name's sake. But also there might be enough food in my house. People, starvation is killing more people than all the wars combined. 
nothing's worth it. The agony of death, of starvation, is unbelievable. We've seen it in America uh, through our early settlers, through our Indians, the different ones living in, living in real dry times. And I just believe in God that we're going to be that open arm that's going to reach out and hand to be able to help them in the time of need. So I need you to help me by planting a seed. Amen. Amen. Planting a seed to meet the needs of those around us. Amen. And that way that when we do that, God will supply our need and have people give to us. Father, we're so thankful for this opportunity to sow a seed to meet the needs of those around us. And we continue to open our hands as we press out into the areas of Oklahoma in the United States and also around the world, reaching out with the love of God, touching people for Jesus by demonstrating the love. We thank you for this opportunity to plant the seed in Jesus' mighty name. We all said amen, amen, amen. and amen. How many are excited about Jesus? Are you excited about Jesus? I'm excited about the time that we're living in. I'm going to tell you last week, I was talking about this uh, memories. Amen. I've just been going through memories. A lot of, a lot of pictures happening on Facebook now. They got that deal comes up. It says, eight years ago, do you remember this? Seven years ago, do you remember this? And I, I, I start seeing these memories, these pictures, the flash. And I thank God that I've been able to go all over the world and touch so many different cultures and so many different nations. And experience things that I never would have experienced growing up in you know, Oklahoma. And that basically I was a ministry here that I believe the name for this thing was Oklahoma, Texas, Kansas. And if I could drive there and get back home, then that was good evangelism. Amen. Wasn't getting on a plane and going to places I didn't want to go. I could sleep in a bed that I didn't like, eating food that I couldn't recognize. Amen. But I was doing it because I had a heart for God, but yet my world was inside this box. And God's trying to get us to pull down these walls and these barriers. In fact, when I came to victory and I and I've been on the basis of God, God was opening up. I, I was having big crusades in America. I was in Chicago, I'm downtown, and all these different areas, preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And God made me go back to victory and go back there to go to missions. But I didn't forget as they extended me into, into victory. I remember walking into the walking into the office and talking to those about going to school and submitting and getting in the missions department. And God spoke, God spoke to me as I came out because the lady said to me, said Billy Joe's out there teaching right now. I said, why don't you go out there and just listen to him for a little while? Well, Billy Joe wasn't my favorite preacher because he just wasn't that boy that I was I like a little bit more fireball. I know, but I liked it, but I mean, it wasn't something I just wanted to sit and tell. It wasn't like I was really excited. It had been T.G. Jackson or something. I would have been jumping up and down and in there, you know. But they you know, it was kind of quiet, you know, and kind of swirling her back. What a mighty man of God. But I walked outside and I remember the Holy Spirit just started tugging me, so. And I had to know the Holy Spirit. And so I listened and I went in and the class had already started. And he was up there teaching and it was packed out. And I opened the doors and I took a couple steps and all of a sudden it was like a cloud of God's glory fell over my over me. Yeah. And God said to me, What are these walls that you built? I brought you here to tear these walls down, to give you a world vision, and give you divine appointments to fulfill the call of God that I have on your life. Yeah. But you must be willing to submit. You must be willing to back up to go forward. You must be willing to get under the mantle and do it God's way instead of your way. Amen. 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 Because it's not my way. I want a God revival. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. 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 If I fill all the churches in the world, if I don't have God in there, what good did it do? But I want God in the middle of our revival. I want God in the middle of our church. And sometimes God asks you to do things you really don't understand why God is asking you to do them. But that's where we as Christians, have to trust the Lord that He's our Father, and that He would not lead us into temptation. But He came to deliver us from evil. He came to show me the path that I might have victory in my life. I want to tell you, when it all is said and done, you're going to have victory in your life when you submit to God. You're going to win this race. If you did, let go and let God be in control of your life. Then God will raise you up to another level. You see, God's value system is different than our value system. 
Amen. Praise the Lord. The things that we value, in fact, go ahead and Matthew 6, 19 through 21. As Matthew is talking to the people there, and he says this, Do not lay up treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up yourself treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroy, and where thieves do not break or steal. But where your treasure is, there also is your heart. Whatever you value is where you're going to spend your time, it's where you're going to spend your money. It's where you're going to spend your energy. It's where you're going to be zealous for. It's where you're going to be passionate about. And so Matthew's talking about that. Quit putting your treasure. And he's not just talking about wealth or gold or silver. But he's talking to put things the temple. Because temple things will always pass away. I mean, it talks about that in Corinthians. It talks about our body. It's temple. And it's going to disappoint us the older we get. It's not going to do what it used to do. Come on, sorry. It's not going to be what we want it to be. Amen. But we got the hope of this. That it's going to fade away. But the eternal is going to be forever. But we're going to get a new body. Come on. Great job. Come on, somebody. We're going to get a new body. Amen. We're going to get another second chance. Amen. God's going to pick you up. And it's going to be a, a glorious body. And it's going to provide. But lay up treasures for yourself and heaven. What is important? What is valuable to you in your life? Because that's where you'll find you're spending your time at right now. So many things that we have, we realize that they're temporal. They're going to fade away. In fact, we try to spend time doing things and trying to find value in them only to find that they don't do what we want them to do. To do because they're temporal. We try to hold on to our children and we can't hold on to them. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Praise the Lord. We try to keep, I think I tell my grandchildren all the time, I just want you to stay in that little tiny baby. I don't want you to ever grow up because I like it when you're in that state. But I want you to stay there. Well, you know something? No matter how bad I hope and want it, they never stay there. And you know what? That little baby turns into a creature. <laughs> Not the place. 
place where thy strength be going. That song where it says, walk not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor rest it in the way of the sinner, but delight yourself in the law of God, the commandments of God, and in the love of God. And God will make you like a tree that's planted by the living water. That you'll bear forth fruit in every season. Yeah. Wow, praise the Lord. And let you hear say, follow instruction. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we got these things amazes me. I buy stuff for people, you know, toys and everything for kids and take it to them. But one of the things that always comes in the package is instructions. <laughs> and for some reason, 90% of the time, nobody ever opens the instruction part. In fact, it ends up in the trash can. And then the part doesn't go together right. And it breaks down and they say, Oh, they sold me a defective piece of, they sold me a defective toy. I'm taking it back and getting my money back. But then they fail to realize that the warranty says, Failure to read instructions. <laughs> Failure to follow instructions voids your right to get no money back. <laughs> and then we get all upset and think, oh, they just want my money. <laughs> no, they want you to follow instructions. They realize there's going to be a few bad apples in the in the batch, and they're willing to give you your money back if you happen to get one of those bad apples. But they know if you don't follow instructions, that 50 percent will be bad apples, because most people don't know how to put it together. In fact, we don't we don't even read the box, and it says batteries not included. <laughs> And we get home and say, I can't believe they put the batteries in there. Right in the box. Batteries not included. And then you get back because you got to go back to the store and you got to buy the batteries to get them out of We need to follow the instruction of God because God came to give us instruction. Faith come up by hearing and hearing by the word of the Lord. You see, if we follow instructions, we'll be blessed coming in and blessed going out. Yes. And God will be the God more than enough. Yes. You see, if we want to put the enemy under our feet, we got to do what God does and God says and be what God told us to be. And if we follow instructions, then we become his disciples yes. and no weapon for master and greater will prosper against you. God says this, take any of my his commitment and wanting us to follow that commitment in Matthew 22, 36 to 40. Teacher, what is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said to him, you shall love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your mind, and all your soul, or all your mind. What is the first and great commandment? And the second is like this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And on these two commandments hang everything of God. It's the mantle of everything. Mantle of the gifts of the Spirit. Mantle of everything. He said in Corinthians, if you have all the gifts, but you have not love, it profits you nothing. You can be a Christian, and if you don't love God and don't love people, you'll never have anything in your life. You'll always be without, because the Bible says to forgive those that have misused you and abused you. And to walk in forgiveness and love people and quit judging people and speaking life to people. Come on, people. We're here to preach the good news. Amen. I'm tired of the Tuesday message that's being brought by the church not to steer Christians into heaven. We don't have to steer them into heaven. We got to lead them into heaven. Yeah, lead them to the side of the war. He restored my soul. But we can't do it by just saying it. We've got to demonstrate it. Come on, somebody. We've got to demonstrate the gospel of Jesus Christ. We've got to show them the way to the truth. Whatever.
King David was getting ready to leave. And he had been transferred his mantle to Solomon. God had already told King David, said, you're not going to build the temple. Well, that was his heart's desire was to build the temple. But yet David spent his whole life getting all the wood together, getting everything together, and putting up all this money to be able to build God's house. But he accepted the part he wasn't going to build it. But this was his job, and this is Solomon's job. Amen. Quit trying to do something you're not called to do, and quit trying to be something you can't be. And be satisfied where God's got you, and God will reward you, and God will appoint you, and God will equip you, and God will exalt you. But start doing good what you can do. Find what you can do. And do it the best you can. And watch what God starts doing for you. And you begin to submit to the will of God. Amen. Amen. Doing what really nobody else wants to do. Being what everybody else wants to be. Quit worrying about titles and positions of value in this world. And start valuing the treasure in heaven. I'm a child of the king. I don't even like to put Pastor Ron in front of my name. I call myself Brother Ron and people get mad at me. But I'm just your brother in Christ. I've got a position, but that position is not for exaltation. It's not for personal wealth or personal gain. But my position is because God called me and anointed me. Yeah. And that's the value system of God. I do it because I love God. Not because somebody offers me something to do. Yeah. But become what God needs you to be in this hour. We're sitting in a mind that the world needs you. Come on. If you can't see it, you're blind. Open your eyes. They need you. Our children need you. Our teenagers need you. We need an army for God. There's no greater gift that we can give God coming into Easter, April the 17th, when we have our Easter service. There's no greater thing that we can do than lead people to Christ. Amen. It's God's will that none will perish, but all will have eternal life. But as David's talking to Solomon, he's telling him, Solomon, you're going to be all right if you'll remember the follow instructions. You know what for? Remember what I did for God. God will do even more for you. Remember to obey all the commandments. Remember to follow the good example and be a good king. And if you do, the God who is with me, he will be with you. How many want God working with you? Amen. First thing I tell you, God's not against you. He said, whosoever will. God's got a plan for everybody here. God gave his son for everybody here. God wants to use you as much as he does anybody else in this room, regardless of the talent, regardless of the wealth. He gave some five, some two, some three, but regardless of what your attribute is or your ability, God's got a plan for you, and it's essential that you get in the plan. It's essential that we go all the way. Give God, go all the way for God. It's essential because we're getting ready to go into the greatest revival the world has ever seen. But God needs you. The nations are going to open up. We're going to go into countries, and we're going to preach this gospel, and we're going to watch miracles and signs and wonders as we demonstrate the power of God's love to people. And we speak the word of faith to them. David goes on to read the Lord, verse Kings 3. Find out that Solomon starts praying and seeking God. Because now everybody's looking at him. Praise the Lord. You know what that is when you've been, you put everything in somebody else's kitchen and then they leave and now you got to do it out of your own kitchen. Don't tell me that. You've been running up by somebody else's anointing. You've been running up somebody else's prayer life. You've been running up somebody else's integrity. You go around telling how great it is and how great that is, but yet you're not really a part of it. It's time for you to quit being a spectator, but become a player. It's time for you to get into action. It's time for you to put on the horn of God that you might be able to stand. It's time for us to follow Jesus, pick up your cross, and follow me. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. Went everywhere preaching, teaching, and healing. All those who are sick and oppressed, the 
59. Again, the Lord appeared to the Solomon in a dream by night and said, Ask what I shall give you. And Solomon said, You have shown such great mercy to your servant David, my father, because he walked before you in truth, in righteousness, and a brightness of heart with you. Go get it. He walked up right, right in righteousness. He put on the character of God, and he put on the truth of God. I know the truth to set you free. Amen. Amen. Keep you free. You have continued this great kindness to him. You have given him a son to sit on the throne as it is this day. Now, the Lord my God, you have made your servant king instead of my father David. But I am a little child, and I do not know how to dwell, and I don't know how to come and help me. I feel like I don't know how to get my ministry birth. I know God's called me to do something. I don't know how I'm going to do it. I don't got enough of this. I don't got enough money. I don't got buildings. I, I don't have a congregation. I don't have a How am I going to do it? This is Solomon. I'm getting this big deal from my dad, but how am I going to do it? All of a sudden, he's overwhelmed. I'm on, the world is overwhelming us. Come on. Praise the Lord. It's time to burden us down. Praise the Lord. It's time to get us distracted off our eyes off our God and get our eyes on the situation. It's time to get us to back up and get us in depression and oppression and quit living by faith and believing and stepping out of the boat. We're regressing into the boat and we're going into prison. And God said, put on the horn of God and start standing. Get out of the boat and I'm going to use you. Yes. Yes. Amen. And you're serving the midst of your people whom you have chosen, a great people too numerous to be numbered and counted. Therefore, give your servant an understanding heart to judge your people that I may discern between what is good and evil, that I might be able to judge such a great people as yours. God, give me a clean heart. Come on. Isn't that what David prayed? God, give me a clean heart. Let me walk uprightly before you because I know if I do, God, what you tell me to do, then I'm going to get a God result. Somebody may have ready. We're coming out of here winners. We're more than conquerors. We are overcomers. There's no weapon formed against us or prosper, but God's going to open the nations up for a people that believe that he can do it. He's going to call forth those Solomon and those men and women of God that have stepped into the ministry. He's calling some Esther's in here. He's calling some Paul's in here. And he says, it's now, it's now, it's now, it's now. Now you know the story. God says to Solomon, because you've not asked for personal wealth, because you've not asked for fame, because you've not asked for the yeah, king, but you've asked to lead my people in a righteousness and lead them in truth. Because you've sought me, and because you you've turned yourself over to me and humbled yourself before God, therefore I'm going to give you everything that you asked for, greater than any man that's walked the face of the earth. But I'm also When we get that right, everything else starts coming. I mean, I like money. When you get your giving right, your receiving will get right. Oh, somebody get that. Get grudgingly, get sparingly. Oh, praise the Lord. Then what happens? You shut it up. Why? Because it's not faith. Faith says God's Jehovah Jireh. Faith says God's going to slot all my needs according to riches and glory. Faith says to help me like being like the birds in the field and those in the air and what trust God. And don't worry, don't care that God provides for them every day. How many other children of Israel when they were in the wilderness? God provided it every day for them. Man every day. Put up from the sky. Every day they did clap. Yes. But their eyes were on him and not Walmart. Their eyes were on him and not the government. How about praise the Lord? Do we have to, does God have to take all our toys out of the basket? You know what made me go to victory? I went to do that without the Joyce Myers, and Joyce Myers was preaching about the eagle. And she was talking about how the eagle gets the little eagles after they've been nurtured and after they've been spoiled. How she gets them out of the nest to find a fly. The first thing that the eagle does is she comes 
to her nest one day. And she pulls and takes all the toys out of the nest. The little fish don't have nothing to play with. And they say, boy, mama must be really mad at us. Because mama's taking all our toys away. What's wrong with her? What are we going to do all day long? Mama leaves and the birds are all upset. They finally calm down after a few days. Mama comes back again and now mama reaches in the nest. It pulls all the padding out of the nest. Now, I don't know if you're old or not, but an eagle builds her nest out of thorns. And she does it on purpose because she doesn't want you to get too comfortable when it's time to pull the padding out of the nest. Mm -hmm. And so she comes in, she throws all the padding out of the nest. And the bird is saying, Mama has gone crazy. <laughs> She took our bedding and she stood all the way. She must really hate us now. What did we do wrong? Then Mama is throwing all the toys away. Mama pulling all the bedding out. And now I'm leaving. There's nothing coming in. And my bills are stacking up. I'm like, God, where are you? What's going on? But Mama is just getting them ready for the great door of opportunity. That is going to turn them into eagles. Yes. Amen. Amen. How many are ready to be turned into an eagle? Yes. Mama comes and the chicks are crying. They're crying 24-7 because they're getting stuck on everywhere. All the toys are gone. And Mama comes and she swoops down and she picks them up. They said, oh, Mama's taking us on a joy ride. She, 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 she must be, she's going to satisfy us and take us to some good things because of all this thing. She's finally come to her senses. And Mama takes off. She takes off and she just starts going as fast as she can, straight up. When she gets as high as she can get, she just flips over backwards. Rough. And all the chicks come tumbling down and start falling in free air. Now they're saying, Mama has decided to kill us. <laughs> <laughs> God's so mad at me, he'll never forgive me ever again. But Mama is there and she's watching them as they're falling. And all of a sudden, they're, they start doing this. And they start working their wings. And then all of a sudden, one by one, they start turning into eagles. And now they don't need mama anymore. Because now they can hunt their own food. Now they can go up high and bat up on the wings of an eagle. And run and not go weary. And walk and not faint. Now they're in position that God can use them. Church, we've been going through a lot over the years. Your personal life has been like topsy-turvy. But I've got news for you. It was for such a time as this. That God is getting ready to show forth His glory in His church. He said the latter glory will not compare to the glory, the former glory will not compare to the latter glory that God's going to reveal in us. Greater things, if I say greater things, Praise the Lord. But we got to trust the Lord. We got to quit complaining. We got to quit thinking that God's mad at us. And realize how valuable we are to God. That you don't invest that much time to burn the building down. But yet God does that. That he might give you a better ending than your beginning. How I drove you in the wilderness. To prove you and to see what you're made of. I drove you out there with the fiery serpents and the scorpions and the pestilence. I drove you out there with dry and bleeding. Let my see what you're saying, what you do when you get out there. God is testing us to see what we're going to do because the world is coming for us. The devil is his time is short. He's coming to kill, kill, and destroy. But God said, I got a banner of readiness. I got a people that they don't know of. I got a people that I'm going to destroy the works of the enemy. 
together again to do what God called us to do. Mark 16, he called us what? Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. And these signs shall follow them that believe. You know, every year, and listen, the two biggest crowds of the year, the two biggest times that more people get saved in the world is Easter and Christmas. But I've watched over the years that the church has become more worldly and worldly and worldly. I've watched the numbers are coming down with the, with the congregation. But the numbers are going up with the loss. It means we're not doing what God called us to do. And they were wondering why. He said, these signs shall follow them that believe. If you're a believer, you've been called. It's time for you to start talking to people about Jesus. It's time for you to start inviting them to the house of God. Easter, we're going to have an Easter egg. It's not even something to draw them here. We're going to have a dinner. We're doing that not just because we want to have a little bit, little bit of there at the church. But we're doing it because we want to see people get saved. We want your family and talk. They get saved. You see what they say when it's time for church? Our family say, well, we're going to have a birthday party. We're going to have this during that time. And we used to say, well, I'm sorry, I can't come. That, that's church time. I'm going to be at church. And now we see the pastor text and we say, well, I'm not going to be there. I'm going to a birthday party. And I'm going, what? It's Sabbath. It's our time coming together. Yeah, that's the only time. No. I made this a long time ago. My family does not plan things on Sunday. Because I told them if you plan on Sunday, I will not be there. Can I get this? And so my family does not plan anything on Sunday. Why? Because I'm going to be at the house of God. What does it say to them? I have a standard. Come on, praise the Lord. That I have a responsibility that I believe that God is my supplier. And that I come in the house of God. But at the house of God is a place that we come together. And God said, don't forsake the assembly of yourself together. It's in this place that we're feeding the multitudes and the nations. It's in this place that people are getting saved every day by the offerings and by the prayers and by the worship that you do. Somebody say, praise the Lord. Matthew 24, 36 to 51. This is Jesus talking. <laughs> no man knows what hour or what day or no, but in that day or hour no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, but my father only. But as the days of no war, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. For as the days were in the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving and marriage until they had to know the end of their heart. And did not know until the flood came and took them away. Also, will the coming of the Son of Man be? Will be so worthy as to mean that we're sinning? It means that we have lost track of what is right and what is wrong. Right. We've lost track of what we call the basic fundamentals of Christianity. Come on, somebody. Amen. This has been built in the very foundation. God didn't change. The church has been the same over generation to generation. And it doesn't change. But somehow or another, we have developed God into our culture. And into our, our lifestyle. And then I do it as long as it's comfortable of what I want to do. But when it doesn't be comfortable anymore, then I'm going to be at the work. I call it rebellious. All oh, praise the Lord. And I'm going to do what I want, how I want to do it, and nobody is going to tell me how to do that. That's fine. The problem is you get your will and not God's will. Amen. But God, God said, God, I have no other God before me. Yes, he did. 
There'll be two men in the field, one will be taking a woman left behind, two women will be riding at the mill, and one taking and one left. Watch therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. But know this, if the master of the house had known what time the thief was going to come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This message I'm preaching is not a message you fill churches up with. I'm just telling you because it's not popular. They'll tell you it's condemnation. But I'm telling you, it's the Word of God. And you can drop your kids if you want. But the Word of God is sharp and powerful. And it does not lie. It does not take. It's everlasting. He will come and keep it up. But the Word of God will still be there. Yes. People come to me still and say, my life's all messed up. I'm going to the Lord. My children. I say, what are you doing? The first thing I'll say is, get back to the basics. What are the basics? Honor the Sabbath. Praise the Lord. Put God first. Yeah. Amen. Put God first. Put God first. Put God first. Yeah. Woo! Verse 44, therefore also be led for the Son of Man is coming in the hour you do not expect. Who then be faithful, our servant who is master over the rule of his household to give them food in this season. Blessed is the servant who is master when he comes will find him doing. Assured I say unto you that he will make him ruler over lots of goods. But if the evil servant says in heart, my master is delayed, is coming. <laughs> and begins to beat his fellow servants and eat and drink his drunkards. The master of the servant will come in that day when he's not looking for him, and an hour that he's not aware of, and will cut him in two and appoint him with a portion of hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Yes. You know why they have boot camp? They have boot camp to prepare you to go to war. They take ordinary batteries that are out of shape and we've got many like Paul, different ones that have gone to the military. And what's always amazing to me, they leave and three months later when they come back, they ain't got an ounce of fat on them. Are you hearing me? Yeah. And when you look at them, they seem like their whole physical structure changed. They got muscles in their cheeks. <laughs> I said, what did they do? Oh, man. They got us up before the birds even get up. They made us eat. They yelled at us. They screamed at us. They made us do things you would not believe what they made us do. They're crazy in there. We went five miles before breakfast, five miles after breakfast, ten miles a day. We went 25 miles a day. And then they put these big old backpack on you and put more and more rocks in it every day. And every day you thought you, oh, I got this down. They put some more on there. But in 30 days, your goal is this. Then I trained you to go to war. So when everything starts going chaotic and the gun bullets start flying and the bombs start going out, that you don't run in fear because you've been prepared physically and you've prepared mentally because you've been getting ready. That's my job, getting you ready for what God has called you to do. I'm getting you ready this morning to tell you it's essential to put on the basics. I didn't say they're always fun. I didn't always say that's what you want to do. I'm saying that's what you need to do. That if you don't do it, you'll never be fully equipped. When the enemy comes in like a flood, you'll waver. I got news for you. You can't stand now. You're really not going to stand when the air is really hot in the kitchen. Now get getting ready to really get hot. Amen. Amen. We can either build our faith or we can build our doubt. Second thing God said to me in the prophecy. This will be the greatest time of separation in the history of the world. 
There will be no more lukewarm. Amen. You're either going to get hot or you're going to get cold. You're either going to pull on that armor or you're going to take that armor off. But don't blame me. I told you about it. I'm not doing it. The enemy has come to kill, steal, and destroy. And he knows his time is short. And he's going to cause heaven among the brothers. Yes. Yeah. Ah, praise the Lord. Better I say, God's my shelter. God's In the middle of this, it sounds like a doomsday day is not. Because as long as I abide in him and he abides in me. Oh, 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 oh. Woo! How many of Jesus was here? They couldn't take his life. Amen. They couldn't stop him from preaching the gospel. But he was broke fish that I go out of the mouth. Yeah. Praise the Lord. They said, Tax, well, here, my tax is taken. I just go ahead and get me another fish out of the water. And then why? Because God provides supernaturally. We got to realize that God's going to provide for us supernaturally in this season. Don't try to figure it out. But trust the Lord. Amen. And God will have to come from places you do not know. Yeah. And he will provide to you for things you never even dreamed would happen. We don't see it much here in America because we're so blessed. But I said this a few weeks ago. There are places that I know of the people that have drove without gas for 28 days wow. in a vehicle. Yes. Because they have work to do for God. Yes. They don't know how it happened. The days never left E. Mm. But every day they came out and started it. And every day God provided. Are you hearing me? Like the widow woman. He said, pack a in wet for me. And then you're never going to run dry. Amen. They can come from somewhere outside. Every day she poured it out. God filled it back up. Supernaturally, God provides for us. We don't walk in temporal. We walk in eternal. My God everlasting. He's grateful. He's true. And I find him. He abides him. I don't have to worry. Yes, amen. Somebody said, praise the Lord. Praise, praise the Lord. Lord. That's what gets me in the past. I, I'm going to start with real news. I want to be like Joyce Myers. <laughs> Joyce Myers, you said, why Joyce Myers? Do you know Joyce Myers didn't pay 10% tithe? Joyce Myers now pays 90% tithing on every dime that comes into her hand. She said 10% was nothing but a seed and a starting point. I refuse to let limitations be put on me. So I started tithing more. And I started tithing more. And every time I tithe more, God had more come in. Until my 10% is more than I used to get at 100%. Somebody better get this. Because she started trusting God. So I said to God, God, I'm not going to tithe on what I make. I'm going to tithe on what I believe in God for. Amen. I'm going to put my faith in the light. You said trust you. Yes. You said my faith. I mean, I see that. So my faith, I'm going to be in to start doing this. You might not do a lot, but I'm telling you. Get out of that stepping block. You said you want a lot to control you. Well, get out of the law and start walking my faith. Every day, I look for places to plant seed. I'm a seed finder. Come on. I'm a faith walker. Come on, somebody. Because you see, I've learned something. That just shall live by faith and not by sight.
And let's watch what God does. When I really start doing what God does. You see, he said, pick up and follow me. You wasn't just talking about when you want to. If we're going to do it, what is it? We can't worry about how many people we have in here. We can't worry about how much money's coming in in our physical hand. But we've got to believe God that God will fulfill his word. That if I preach everywhere, God will work with me with signs, and wonders, and miracles. I got to quit worrying about my health and start putting myself on the line. God, I said, there was somebody yesterday that was over here. This is what I said to me. As long as I can get up, I'm going to keep on going for God. It might be all I got, but as long as I can get up, and it's walking like this, as long as I can get up, I'm going to keep going for God. I said, that's the attitude we've got to get. God, greater is he to see me than he was in the world. Matthew 25, 31 through 45. When the Son of Man comes in glory, all his angels will be with him. And he'll sit on his glorious throne. And all the nations will gather before him. And he will separate the people from one another as the shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep on his right side. And he will put the goats on the left. I read out, this is the church. He's not talking about the world now. He's talking about the church. We're in the kingdom. Then the king will say to those in my right hand, Come, you who bless my father, take your inheritance. The kingdom is prepared for you since the creation of the world. Remember Jesus said, I go away to prepare a place for you, that where I am, you will be also. In my father's house are many mansions, and I told, I told you so. But I go away to prepare a place for you. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous answered him, Lord, when did we see you hungry, and feed you, and thirsty, and give you something to drink? When you did it unto the stranger, and invite you in, or need any clothes, you clothe you. When did we see you sick in a prison and go and visit you? The king will reply, truly, I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of one of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did it unto me. Amen. This is what God is coming back to look at. Matthew 22, 23, 24 is all leading up. Talking about Noah, talking about the towns, talking about the vineyard. But when it gets to the end, this is one of the only scriptures you'll see where Jesus now has came back, basically at God the church. Because now he's sitting back there. I mean, no, when he comes to get up, he's coming back. And then he's coming back, standing up, coming for us. When he sits down, he's going to be judging the world. And he said, This is what I'm going to be looking at. When I was hungry, you fed me. When I was naked, you clothed me. And when I was in prison, you visited me. When you did it to the least of one of them, you did it unto me. Now you know why. The end time revival is the revival of love. Oh, come on. Signs, wonders, and miracles will always follow love. But love has got to be our motive and our main, main table setting is love. How are we going to do that? By believing God that we can do more. Somebody listen to me. We're getting ready to go. Come on, have y'all We're getting ready to go. And separating right now, and I believe that he's talking about him, but he's also talking about us that are here right now. Yes. Talking about this time of separation. We're making a decision. I already really make my decision right now. Amen. No man knows what hour exactly what's going to happen, but I can say this. I know by the scripture, the focus that God is looking at okay. and what he wants you and I to do. That's the reason why we feed people. That's the reason why we clothe people. And that's the reason why we visit the nations. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. 
Come on. Yeah. One thing I found out about a physical prison. I know when people read that, they say physical prison. No. I bet I bet you know, maybe you can hot you can say that. But the prison that God is talking about is the prison that people have built around their life. The addictions, yes. Yes. the habits, yes. the things that control them. That they're in a box and they don't have any way to get out. And they say things like this. I hate my life. I hate what's going on. I don't even really want to be alive right now. That is a spiritual prison. Yes. And God wants to break that prison out. Yes. Amen. Yes. And have we all ready to break that out. Amen. Yes. How do we do it? We confess with our mouth and believe in our heart. I believe when he comes back, everything that he did was about what I preached on today. About us as a church changing our value system. Changing what's really important as a church. Church, let's go after souls. Come on, let's go after the law. Come on, let's go after the law. I'm proud of all you. They went out. I don't know, they probably handed out a couple hundred flyers. They designed those flyers. And the flyers got those flyers went out door to door. You know what they said was? Are you seven day Adventists? Are you are you uh Jehovah Witnesses? No, we're from this church. Well, nobody from the church comes around. What, what are you doing here? Wait, what are you doing here? Nobody in the church gets out and walks doors anymore. Nobody goes out where you're not supposed to go anymore and preach the gospel. We come to church, we pay our tithes, praise the Lord, but we don't go out on the highways and head to come in. We say, well, somebody else will do it. No. God's called you to do. We got to get out. And this summer, I want to evangelize Oklahoma. I want to evangelize by going to the town and knocking on every door and telling them God loves them. I want you to do it right now, right in your little world. We're coming up on Easter. I want you to pack this place out on Easter. Pack it out with your family. Pack it out with people that need a miracle from God and healing, a deliverance, salvation. But bring the lost in. Bring those in there. Bring those that are hungry and God will fill them up. Let's give God a smile on his face.
Isaiah said, God send me. The angel came and took a coal off the fire. You remember, and went and touched his lips and God filled him with the Holy Ghost and fire. Jeremiah, God, I can't, God. I'm just a boy, I can't do it. Before you were born, Jeremiah, I ordained you, I sanctified you, I called you, and I put my words in you. Don't worry about the kids. They were, they were afraid of Jeremiah. But I want you to go with them, and I want you to tell them that I'm coming back again. I want you to tell them I'm coming here. I'm here to tell you today. God's not giving up. He's coming back again for us. He's not through you. He's going to turn our soul into joy. He's going to turn our glory. He's going to give us that garment of praise for that spirit of heaven.
home. Yes. Yes. So I'm glad again watch this. Yes. I believe the church works with the Jew. Amen. Yes. I believe they were centered yes. for together. Yes. Christ was a Jew. Yes. Back when the gospels that Matthew preached his lineage is a Jew to prove that he could be the son of God. I'm not trying to tell you that to try to scare you. I'm just telling you that something is happening. Something is happening. And that you need to open your eyes to what God is doing right now. Because the pieces are coming together. They look like they're messed up. But when it gets done, the piece is going to be a beautiful picture. And we're going to be full restoration. I love you. Thank you for being this morning. God bless you. Remember, Jesus is Lord. Just as we open it.